we have examples of, of, of past migrations that were free and were much more a form of circulation and going back and forth. And borders tend to lock up people on one side of the border. When you put in a border, yes, numbers of new people coming will decrease, but also numbers of people returning. And you may unwillingly push people into a permanent settlement, which is often neither the wish of government nor the wish of migrants themselves, but they then opt to stay on the safe side of the border. And this is what we've seen over the last uh, decade. I think the guest worker example is a very good example of migrants who came temporarily, but when after the 1970 three oil crises, more restrictions were gradually being put in place. Many of those so-called guest workers from, from countries like Turkey and Morocco and Tunisia decided to stay and then have their families reunified. Exactly the same happened in the United States with Mexican migrants who, when border controls went up, opted to stay permanently and actually have their families reunify them. So actually reinforcing uh, migration and permanent settlement. So often those policies that have not really been thought through lead to the exact opposite result of what politicians intend to do. We've done a really big uh, statistical study. We have collected all data we could get about migration movement over the last 50 years from a whole range of countries. And we have, for instance, statistically estimated the effect of a visa. And what we saw on the average, and this is of course an average, is that Border, so a visa reduces inflows by roughly the same amount as return flows. Of course, this may differ from country to country, but the average effect basically means both effects cancel each other out. What you basically do is interrupt circulation. Few people realized that before 1991, Moroccans didn't need a visa to go to Spain. So they would just hop on the ferry and move across the Strait of Gibraltar, 15 miles, to Spain. And most Moroccans did so. Like to spend a few months in Morocco, to travel around, many would work in Spain, like in agriculture, for instance, or in construction, but there was no reason for them to stay because Morocco is so close by, it's much cheaper to live there, and they tended to return to their families. In 1991, as part of the Schengen zone sort of establishment, Spain introduced a visa for Moroccans. And this was, ironically enough, the start of permanent settlements of Moroccans in Spain, and now we have a diaspora uh, from Morocco and Spain of more than one million people. Part of the reason for that is that if you have to spend more money crossing borders, if you have to apply for a visa or pay a smuggler, the stakes are much higher and you're much less likely to return, particularly if you haven't got any papers, you're an undocumented migrant. So actually, sometimes borders increase the tendency to, for migrants to settle permanently against their own wishes to actually go back and forth. So this is one example of, we have examples of, of, of past migrations that were free and were much more a form of circulation and going back and forth. And borders tend to lock up people on one side of the border. And that is one of the negative consequences of, of border controls and very strict immigration rules that not many politicians think about. Mm -hmm.